What's up, guys? This is the Vinyl Casket. We are back with another weekly comic book review. I am Nick. This is the home to the lamest taste. Do me a major favor and check out my Twitch and YouTube, The Vinyl Casket and Vinyl Casket, where you can please subscribe, follow, like, and comment. Check out all the videos I have up on my YouTube channel already at this moment. Tons of cool stuff from movie reviews, TV show reviews, trailer reactions, manga reviews, album reviews, uh, all these things. You can check out Manny Reads Comics on YouTube for our weekly roundup show. Um, and we're going to get right into it with my stack, which is not that big. Um, so the way we do this is that we pick up the books, we read the books, we... Bag and board the books. We take pictures for Instagram, which will be uploaded throughout the weekend. And then we review the books for you guys. So we're going to start off with Indies, then Marvel, then DC. We're starting off with Boom Studios with issue 18 of Mighty Morphin. Second issue written by Matt Grom. My biggest problem with this uh, issue last month was the art style wasn't for me. And while this is clearly the same artist, I think... This issue, 110% adjusted the artwork. They were felt a little bit better. Um, it's definitely not on the same level as the previous artist who is currently doing just the Power Rangers line. Um, I did Mighty Morphin before, and I'm pretty sure that artwork felt like was consistent throughout uh, Gogo and... Um, Power Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, or at least similar. This last issue was pretty drastically a little bit more cartoony, a little bit rough around the edges with drawing style, like sketch drawing. Um, I think it felt a lot better and cleaner and more natural in this issue. I could be wrong, but that was my personal opinion. Um, I really like what they're doing with the two different, you know, with the Red and Green Ranger protecting Earth, and you know the other guys going to. To space and trying to get stuff, and it's very interesting. I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna give this a eight out of ten. Uh, we go on to Image Comics with issue nine of Noctera. Uh, I enjoyed this. Uh, it was a little bit at times. I felt like it went too all over the place with this whole blacktop bell thing. Like I'm just so over this character. But they explained a little bit more of his origin, even though we got a whole one shot for his origin. Um, it was cool. I like the character development. I like the art. I like, you know, what the story's doing. I'm think I feel like it start. we had a big hiatus and now the last couple of issues have just been like this dragging thing where like the first, what are we first six issues were super fast. Like lots of stuff happened in a short period of time. We're three issues since then. And I feel like nothing's happened. Um, at least nothing major. It's just annoying. It's just it's just really annoying. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. I'm gonna give it a uh, six and a half out of ten. We move on to the big book, which is Image Issue One, which is a thicker, almost trade paperback. It's got a ton of stories in it. Uh, is a monthly magazine that will be coming out every month for the next year. Um, you know, that all red on the back, image 30. Uh, you got Radiant Black reading Youngblood uh, with the Radiant Black black hole. Image on the bottom with an exclamation point. I really like this. Um, you got a ton of stories, uh, which are... There's one shots. There's one of twelves. There's one of threes. One of fours. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. And then you have um, the monthly comic strip, Stupid Fresh Mess, which is Scotty Young. Uh, it's his like side company hustle thing. It's really cool that this is included in here. Um, but let's go over the things that I liked. I really liked the Blizzard. I really like Gospel for a New Century. Um, obviously, like Stupid Fresh Mess. Uh, I like Shift, which was the the 
story for the Radiant Black character. And Billy Dogman was okay. Um, I thought these things were cool. We're getting a four-part shift story. Blizzard was really cool. Actually, what was the second the second story? Old Dog the Drop was really cool too. Um, I thought they all had really cool artwork, different styles. Um, this is the Scotty Young uh, comic strip. It's just these two pages. It was really cool. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was awesome. It's issue one of 12 issues. Um, and it's not even that expensive. They did four of these for the Skybound X uh, anniversary last year. They I think is that they did four uh, in the very similar style as this. Um, I think it was less. I think it was only four like mini stories, mini series in each issue. But this has a ton of stuff. I really like this. Obviously, I'm going to give this a 8 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. It is free for what you're paying. You're paying like the same price as a like a cardstock Batman issue. And you're getting like 10 stories in here of quality. Um, issue 100 of Marvel's Elektra. So this is a special anniversary issue. They decided to do... Uh, railing out her in uh, Devil's Reign. So they decided, hey, we're up to 100 issues. Let's do issue 100. I was highly disappointed about this issue. Um, I feel like the timeline made no sense. The costume made no sense. Costume is not what she was wearing on this. Uh, the backup story was cool. I like that. It was just basically a mind narrated Daredevil story where Daredevil and Elektra are dancing and kissing and that's it. Cool. That's it. That was awesome. You had a collection of electric covers, I think, up until issue 100, which was cool. But the main story was her and Typhoid Mary and, like, exploring Typhoid Mary's uh, condition. But, like, it wasn't enjoyable. It was hard to read through. It was a lot of dialogue. Um, it made no sense. She's wearing a black and red costume. Um, it's They're saying Mayor Kingpin... So, like, it's kind of recent, but it's definitely not post um, Devil's Reign, but she's not wearing the Devil's suit. So, I don't know what this even was supposed to be. I'm giving it a four. Um, X-Men issue 10. I don't like this new layout design with the barcode layout and the issue number layout. I don't like this. Um, this cover's cool. Uh, this is Lady Deathstroke issue. It was okay. Uh, mostly Laura Kenny, um, X-23 Wolverine. That was cool. It was interesting. It wasn't bad. It kind of pushed me back to not drop this for another week. It was a fun issue, but I'm assuming this is a one-shot story. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Uh, we move on to DC with issue 11 of DC Black Label's Tom King Man Batman Catwoman Batcat issue 11 we have one issue left. One issue left. This was cool. Uh, Dick Grayson goes in the Batcave. New Batgirl man. Son of Catwoman and Batman. Kicks his ass. Um, obviously this is not the Beyond Universe. Because uh, Batman's uh, dead. At around the age he would have been. He's also never married. Um, in the Beyond Universe. This would be, but I'm assuming where the frick is Damien? Where the frick is Tim? He, she Catwoman references it. It's really cool. I like how it bounces back and forth between different time periods while telling a very cool narrative. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Uh, and then we go into the final issue for the week, which is issue five of Batgirls. That was sick. Love this cardstock cover. Uh, that was a Jim Lee variant for Batcat. Um. This one, it just continues to tell a really cool story with all three Batgirls, and I love it. It's it's a eight and a half, nine. Amazing artwork, awesome story. It's fun. It's action-packed. It's entertaining. I'm really, really enjoying this. And that's all I got to say. That's my pick of the week. My my picks for the week. Um, very small week. Uh, check out 
next Tuesday when the next issue episode of the weekly roundup comes out on Manny Reads Comics on YouTube. I won't be on it, unfortunately. Uh, I got to do something tonight, but I will be on the next episode after this one that comes out this Tuesday. Thank you guys so much. Remember to stay lame.